Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample questions discussion. We are still in chapter four talking about several questions which can be expected from this chapter and uh, we'll be continuing ahead to look forward to some more questions to add more value in our understanding to tackle the chapter four questions as it is the most crucial part of our entire syllabus where we have 11 questions coming up only from this particular chapter. So let's look into the next question for today, which is question number 27. A company's employees are paid bonuses if they work more than a year in the company and achieve a target which is individually agreed before. Now this will give you, the very first statement will give you that what are the gates, what are the conditions and how exactly the outcome should be defined. So it's a very uh, straightforward condition given to you that if three criteria, that is the three conditions are met, then only the output must be yes, otherwise it should be no. So the employee must have completed one year in the organization and should have agreed to the target and achieved the target as well. Now these facts can be shown in the decision table which is given to you here, which gives you four tests uh, accumulated together. But we do understand from the scenario or the technique itself that when you have three conditions, there will be possible eight combinations which you can try with. But sometimes we try to simple or break down the table into simplified form so that uh, you don't really have to test, uh, test all the unwanted combinations which may not be realistic as well. And that's what the question is all about. So which of the following test case, which is given in the option, represents a situation that can happen in the real life and is missing in the above decision table? So more importantly, what we are trying to understand here is that we, when we tried shrinking this table from the eight combinations to four, is there anything which is critical which we are missing in the table? And the options will here help you to answer the question. The question alone cannot help you to get the right answer. You need to be driven by the option in such questions where they clearly say that which one of the given option is uh, meeting the expectation of uh, making sure that the situation can happen in real life and is not included. So don't go by the question here, straightforward look into the options and analyze that whether this is one of the situation which can happen in real life and is not included in the table. Right? Sometimes those scenarios which are given to you can be included already in the table just to trick you around. So make sure that you put your effort in the options, cross back, or cross check back with the table provided to you and then come up with your conclusion. But at the same time, you are supposed to understand if the gates are met. That means agreed and achieved with one year of experience. So let's look at the option A. Option A says condition one is yes, condition two is no, condition three is yes, and action is no, which means that the employee says he has one year of employment, condition two, which is agreed target, no, and says achieve the target, yes. Of course, the bonus will not be there, but this is unrealistic situation. That means if somebody says that I did not participate in a competition and I won the competition, that's completely unrealistic. You may, be, may would have fulfilled the criteria of participation, but you did not participate in it and you claim that you won the you know, event or whatsoever it is. So that's completely unrealistic. So judge yourself, simplify the scenario into more uh, layman level to get the right help. Let's look at option B. Condition one is yes, condition two, yes, condition three, no, and the action is yes. Here we say that the employee is uh, having one year of experience and uh, agreed to achieve the target, but did not achieve the target. How can the action be yes? That means he will not achieve, get the bonus because he did not achieve the target. He only qualifies, he participated, but he did not win. So no bonus for him. So this is again an unrealistic situation which should not be included. C. Condition 1 is no, condition 2 is no, condition 3 is yes, action is no. Of course, here again you can put it back into the table. The employee has uh, not at least one year of experience, no experience of one year. He did not agree to the target and he claims that he has achieved the target. That's something again unrealistic and the action is appropriate but not realistic enough to be captured into our table to be covered. Let's look at the option D which is the only option remaining and understand that he says condition one no, condition two yes, condition three no and action is no. Now what about this? 
He says that he could not complete one year of experience, but he agreed to a target, whatever target we planned for, and he did not achieve and did not give the bonus. Now, let's take it in the layman level to understand why this could be correct. The answer is, when you talk about uh, an event which is happening, I, for some reason, I did not qualify to participate. But you came here and said that, can I also try and participate in the event? Okay, you allowed him that, fine, okay, go ahead and run the race. Let's see if you win or not. You could not win. Fine, you won't get the bonus. But at least you tried taking that attempt to agree on the target that, can I also agree on this target and give it a try? Okay, fine. That's something can be realistic with a wildcard entry saying that, yes, you may be allowed. But again, you won't get the bonus. If the bonus part was yes, that is action is equal to yes, then this is an unrealistic situation. So D seems to be more relevant when I can ask somebody to uh, claim that, would you like to agree on this agreement or maybe this condition? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead. So yes, this could be to a certain extent a real-time environment, a real-time situation, which can be included in the table. So putting it all together, the right answer here is D, condition one is equal to no, condition two is equal to yes, condition three is equal to no, and action is equal to no, could be one of the cases which we should be covering in our scenario and talking about it. Let's look at the next question here. Question number 28. Which of the following statements about the given state transition diagram and the table of test cases is true? So of course, that completely relies on the technique which you understand as state transition testing and the given diagram and table because there's something which lies specifically in the diagram and the table and with your understanding on the technique. So compare your learning about the technique with this diagram and table. So if you look at this diagram, let's analyze that first. Here we have got a state transition diagram of TV and where it says TV off, state one, TV standby, state two, and TV play is a state three. They say that I can go from off to standby, standby to off, then standby to TV play, which is RC on, which says remote control on, and you put off the remote, it goes back from TV play to TV standby. But when the directly a power cut happens in your house, then you go from TV play to directly TV off. But when the power comes back, they have not given you a condition. Again, you can decide on that TV part, which TV you are using, which country you are in. If power comes back, does it go to TV play or TV standby? So that's up to you. Again, we don't have to judge that, like which country, which TV they're talking about. It's just that the given diagram and the table as per the same. So table exactly covers table exactly covers the given diagram. So no confusion here. We got one test for S1 to S2, second for S2 to S1, three S2 to S3, four S3 to S2, and five S3 to S1. This diagram has five transitions, right? Let's look at these statements given now. But before that, you can quickly review your learning about the state transition testing. And we have covered this in our discussions earlier in the previous sessions. So A, the given test cases cover both valid and invalid transitions in the state transition diagram. No, the invalids are never represented as a part of state transition diagram because if we represent it, then it becomes valid. So that's absolutely not true. B, the given test cases represent all possible valid transitions in the state transition diagram. Yes, one of the properties of our state transition testing is that it always represents only valid transitions in the diagram. But let's confirm with the other two options. Option C says the given test cases represent some of the valid transitions in the state transition diagram. No, it represents all of them. And D, the given test cases represent pair of transitions in the state transition diagram. No, the pair between S1 and S3 is missing. Okay, S1 and S3, the pair is missing. There's only one transition, one way communication. So there's no pair there. So that's also not correct. So I think we got the straightforward understanding from the properties, from the learning of state transition diagram. The right answer is B, the test case represents all possible valid transitions in the state transition diagram, which is one of the properties of state transition testing. Let's look at the next one, which is question number 29 and the last question of chapter four. 
A video application has the following requirement. The application should, shall allow playing a video on the following display resolution. That is different resolutions here, 640 by 480, 1280 by 720, 1600 by 1200, and 1920 by 1080. Now, which of the following list of test cases is the result of applying the equivalence partition test technique to test this requirement? Now, that's a very weird scenario which you can ever get in your examination where they don't give you the ranges, but they still want you to test the uh, scenario with help of equivalence partition. Now, there's only one straightforward thing. Whenever there are variations, right? Unique variations, like there are unique resolutions provided to you, you will have them in different partitions and one test for each, okay? So it's not always that the range is what you classify, but here the range is saying that each resolution is one range. So you will take one video from 60, 640 by 480, you will take one video from 1280 to 720, you will take one video from 1600 to 1200, and you will take another video from 1920 to 180, which covers all the scenario, all the items, with minimum number of test cases, which is four. So without talking about any of the options here, the right answer is, C, verify that the application can play a video on each of the display sizes in the requirement, that is four test cases. But other, other options will certainly not meet the coverage of the given scenario with one test case or two test case, or again, one test case. So straightforward, the right answer should be four. And the, this is where we look forward to understand that when the scenario doesn't have any ranges, how do we tackle them with the uh, techniques like equivalence partition and boundary value analysis. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.